I'm the uh, innovation platform leader for the built environment at Innovate UK. And I, actually, just before I go to my presentation, there's a couple of points I want to just uh, make before, which are very relevant. Um, within Innovate UK, we have uh, the Catapult Networks, which is um, 10 centres of excellence around the UK. Uh, one of those is, is the Energy Systems Catapult, um, which is opening just down the road. Um, we've also linked in with the ETI, who are doing a lot of work on smart systems and heat. Um, the KTN themselves, the Knowledge Transfer Network, have a big energy team. Uh, and the Innovate UK, we have an energy team as well, they put out a lot of rounds of funding. There's a competition open at the moment, which is called uh, Game Changing Technologies for Energy, uh, something around those lines. Um, the, the, the trick with it is actually that energy companies are not allowed to apply into it. So it, it's really disrupting technologies coming into that sector. Um, if you want to find out anything I'm going to mention in this, and the easiest way is, is, on, is through Twitter, uh, Simon LIBP. Don't send me emails because I run my inbox like a sort of big data store. You know, everything goes in there and you run analytics on it occasionally. About 2,000 unread emails in there from, from the last week. So don't do that. Um, so we are Innovate UK. Um, Innovate UK. So hands up who's heard of us before. Okay, oh, that's pretty good. Uh, actually, interesting, I did this uh, at uh, Civil Service Live um, about, uh, about three or four weeks ago. Nobody had heard of us in the room. And that was a room full of civil servants. Uh, something's going wrong there. Um, so we, we basically, we fund, support, and connect innovative businesses to accelerate sustainable economic growth. Basically, we fund and connect. So we, we're able to connect people together to form collaborations to then bid into to funding opportunities. Uh, we look at where the market is going. We try to set innovation challenges that are just, uh, just ahead of where the market needs to be. So typically two to three years in advance of where that's going to be. We'll set innovation challenge around that, that theme. People then bid in into competitions. And if they're successful, they will, they will get a grant fund to take that project forward. Uh, Innovate UK, typically we bridge the gap between, um, between the academic research and and business you know, commercializing an idea. It's called the valley of death. It's that bit where um, academic, fantastic research takes place in universities. It, it, it then gets through PhD, but then it doesn't get into, into commercialization because there isn't the support for it. That's what we do. We take that, that part of, the, work, of, the, of the, um, the research forward and turn it into commercial opportunities. So why innovate? Well, innovation is around creating new knowledge. Um, the UK, we spend about 18 billion on R&D in the UK every year. Um, now, the UK, we, we are 1% we are of, the, of the global population. 1% um, of global population. But we have about 4% of, of global GDP. So in order to, oh, yeah, actually there's a little stat on there. It's a bit too, it's come out a bit small there. But it's about two, we spend about 2% of GDP on, on, on R&D. So well, if you think that's, that's a lot of money, and, you know, if we've got a, We've got to stimulate the economy. We need growth to sustain our, our standards of living, uh, to sustain that position as, as punching, punching harder than our weight you know, on the, for, for wealth. Then actually, well, Germany, they spend 68 billion. So, so we're already substantially behind uh, what Germany is doing. And then if you think that's, uh, that's a lot, well, China, they spend 119 billion on R&D. And actually, 95% of China's R&D spend is on late stage demonstrations. So it's really that they're really right at the commercialization end. Now that 119 billion is about what we spend on our NHS. So if you can imagine an organization the size of the NHS, everything right away from primary care, hospitals, doctors, secondary care, uh, all dedicated to innovation and R&D, that's what is going on in China. So what do we do as Innovate UK? What are we looking at? This is Innovate UK on a page. Uh, this is slightly outdated, this is from last year, but actually the, the themes are the same, the numbers are slightly different. So you can see up there, and I actually sit over here in the built environment section. We're one of the smaller teams. We've actually had one of the bigger impacts compared to some of the others. We like to think we've, we've done that quite well. You can see on there, we also look after energy, space at the top is a cross-cutting theme, health and care, transport, high value manufacturing, digital economy. And then some of the emerging technologies Resource efficiency, circular economy. And down the bottom there, we do things around electronic sensors, photonics. We're looking into quantum um, technologies. Uh, we're looking into stratified medicine, uh, additive manufacturing, uh, right across the board. And there in the digital economy section, 
that's probably the one that's having the biggest impact on, on the built environment sector um, in the last couple of years that I've been involved with it. So the stats from the government, so on construction, the built environment construction is, is 90 billion, uh, contributes 90 billion to the UK economy. Um, it uh, employs around 3 million people are involved in, in the whole of construction, so everything to do with the built environment, because built environment is fundamentally underpinning uh, what we have in cities. And of course, many of you may know this, the, the industrial strategy for construction. Hands up, anyone know this? Okay. Okay, so the, so the government has a construction leadership council that acts as uh, to steer the industry. And um, in, in, uh, in 2013, they put together this, this document called Construction 2025. It is well worth a read. It's still available. Just Google Construction 2025. You'll find it on the government website. And it's still in place. So it was ratified recently to be, to be continued. And the targets in there were around 30% lower costs, 50% faster delivery, 50% lower emissions, and also 50% improvement in exports or trade. Right. That's, um, that's challenging. And when that came out, it was, it, was, it was met with the usual construction industry enthusiasm for new things. Um, and if you know construction industry, you also know that some of the challenges it has historically, these are some of the quotes out from uh, some of the favourite reports that go around the industry from uh, from all the various dates. I think the great one there from 1994 from, from the Michael a from the report. Uh, the industry is incapable of delivering for its customers. Uh, and at the top there, you've got from Lord Taylor, Taylor Review. Um, it's no longer fit for purpose. Industry as a whole is underachieving. So that's the government's own reviews. That's their opinion on the construction industry. Um, I actually my background was in automotive. Um, I spent 13 years in automotive design development, in particular in electronics, software, powertrain controls, and then up into manufacturing. Uh, and actually, there's, um, there's a lot to be brought over from those sort of industries that have already gone industrialized, particularly in efficiencies in terms of safety, in terms of, uh, of output. The interesting part is my very first job in construction, uh, I was handed a, a two-dimensional drawing on a piece of paper and told to, uh, to, to measure it for some cable runs to make sure these cables would fit through the building. And uh, so, of course, they gave me this, and I thought, well, uh, well I've known automotive. I was like, okay, so where's the three-dimensional drawing? Where's the model? Where's the wire routing software? Where's the, uh, where's the simulation software that allows me to run all this through and optimize the design? I said, oh, no, 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 what you do? You take this triangular ruler, and um, you put it on the drawing, and you find this, this, that's a door. So we reckon that's about 800 wide. So you scale that with your ruler. Then you measure across from there over to there, which I mean, that's, that's about 40 meters, and there's your cable run. Great, okay. And, um, so that was the most advanced technology they had at the time. Um, that building was actually uh, 20 Fenchurch Street, the Walkie Talkie building. And that was in 2014. Some of the challenges that the industry has is actually complete massive regulation. And that is a, that's taken from Farrell Review. And that kind of shows, so on the right hand side, these are all the departments that have an influence on, on the built environment, as in on cities. And the challenges is, of course, where they all came from, all the different places where they came from. So um, we, we obviously innovate as, as part of BIS, but BIS sets the industrial strategy. BIS, of course, used to, used to be called DBE, double R. It was called the DTI. Um, DEC, of course, uh, again, a very substantial input to what we do. It used to be called Department of Environment of the Regions, and then you go all the way back, and you've got them over here as, uh, where did they start out? Maybe Ministry of Public Works and Buildings, something around that. So it's a real difficult area to work in because of the tangled regulations that we have that face for the industry. And this is one of the particular challenges we have when you're trying to transform an industry to bring in greater efficiencies. So who's heard of BIM? Ah, that's better, right, okay. So BIM is basically a very good design process applied to construction. And BIM came out of that Construction 2025 strategy. Now, BIM is not new, it's been around for, for 20 or 30 years, but the UK is currently the world leader in BIM technologies. So BIM stands for Building Information Modeling, and it's basically the design process, standardized design process, does away with all those paper drawings and all that, that measurement with rulers, it gets rid of all that, it does it all into three-dimensional CAD, it builds up a strategic asset database of every single asset in the building before you start construction. So, for example, in this room here, there would exist, if this had been built through with, using BIM, 
we would have a digital representation of this building. Every single light fitting, we'd know exactly who supplied it, what the wattage was, when it needs to be replaced, how, what, what's the material content contained within it, what's the fire retardance rating, how many of them are across your entire estate, where are they, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the sort of level of information that's currently is, is being, it's missing in the industry, in the mainstream, but it's being adopted. The way the government did it was they set, they set a BIM mandate, and they said that in, uh, by April 2016, all publicly procured construction projects had to be BIM level two compliant. So that means they had to have a minimum set of data which is on this sort of triangle here that's in this area. So they had to have a, a fixed set of data, they had to follow a set of standards and a set of protocols uh, to get to that stage. Now, where BIM is going is, is it starts to get quite interesting. Now, you, you probably won't understand this diagram. It, it's pretty complex, but this is a data diagram. And this is a data diagram related to the built environment. You can get hold of this, you just, you just Google BIM level three and you'll find it. But this is all about asset management. This is all about smart cities. This is all about energy management. Essentially, you, you start off, you build your building, you take it into operation, you gather all the data about how it operates, how you maintain it, um, the costs of maintaining it, and you also do that for all the performance of the building. So how much energy is it using? Uh, what's the carbon emissions? How much water is it consuming? How healthy are the people? How productive are the people using that facility? In the case, maybe it's a, maybe it's a hospital. How many hip operations is it performing? And then what you can do, because you've, you've done that across all of your buildings, you can then start to go up the asset tree. So you can go up, abstract the data. You can say, okay, across my entire portfolio, how are these buildings doing? And then you go further up and you say, okay, so how's my smart city doing? And then across the top, you've got the government strategy. Because you can see all of this data about how all these different, different models interact. And that's basically, it's data, it's IoT, um, but it's, it's a lot of the subjects that we've talked about here. This is under development now. So this is in the process of being developed. Uh, we're hoping to, to get some announcement on that in the new year, uh, given the spending review recently. But that is really driving the industry forward. Because with all that data comes the security a security challenge, because you're putting an enormous amount of asset information out in the public domain. Um, this is a really good example here, where, where somebody has, uh, obviously a, a firm has developed a really nice BIM model, very, very detailed. They love to shout about it, because they've done a really good job of it. Fine, they have. So what do they do? Well, they, well, they put an article in, in Construction Manager. And what they've done is revealed uh, a series of underground assets that they should not have revealed. And that's just one example. So, um, so this is th these are the projects actually that my team have delivered in the built environment. Um, across all of those, we have we funded around 20 major competitions, 580 projects, about 800 companies have received funding from us, um, around 118 million pounds of, of, uh, of funding. And some of the really interesting stuff that you you will want to dig into. All of these resources are free. It's all out there. It's all free to go and access. There are some fantastic findings from projects out there. There's some fantastic reports. Um, there's fantastic databases of information. To give you an example, Design for Future Climate, uh, which is, uh, I can't spot it, there it is on the top line, second one down. Design for Future Climate, we funded 50 building projects to develop climate adaption plans. Um, there was a series of high profile reports and even a REBA book were written about that. The reports are available to download, that you can read them for free, you can use all the information in there, you can access all the case studies for all the projects. Um, building performance evaluation, uh, that's the one measuring the performance gap. You know the difference between what a building should do and what it actually does? So, so we've, we've measured that, it's about 3.6 times, worst case nine times. So that's buildings using up to nine times more energy than what they were designed to do. And that's across all buildings. That's houses, that's apartments, that's schools, that's factories, that's hotels, that's offices. There is an enormous amount of data in that. Every single project recorded data for how every single asset in that building for five minute intervals for two years. They wrote reports, they wrote interim reports, they did interviews with the occupiers, they took thermal images. There is an enormous amount of data available with that. As a result, we're gonna be working with a digital catapult to extract the lessons from that. And you can go onto the digital catapult website and find 
um, the site was called uh, Building Data Exchange. Inside that, I think it went live this morning, there was an enormous volume of information you can start digging into. But it also gives you a way in to accessing digital technology with the digital catapult. And that's the, primarily the reason why we did it, because it provides you a, a way of accessing that type of digital technology and presenting to those companies involved in that exactly your world, your view of the world. They can then access it, they can see opportunities, and they can start to grow and, and create solutions for you. I think I'm out of time. Right, can we take some questions? Okay, thank you. Simon, thank you. That concludes um, a very exciting list of discussions, which I want to become.